Hello and welcome to Northwest Florida State College Outlook. In this episode, I have the privilege of interviewing our Florida College System Chancellor, Madeline Pumariega. Chancellor Pumariega serves as the Chief Marketer for our state college system, and we were honored to host her on our campus for our recent Spring Convocation event. I hope you enjoy this episode of Northwest Florida State College Outlook. Welcome to Northwest Florida State College Outlook. NWF is committed to providing students with opportunity to meet their educational goals and to helping them achieve success. Our mission is our students, helping each person who comes through our doors to achieve their individual goals for education and career attainment. It's good to be with you on Outlook today, and we're very honored to have Chancellor Madeline Pumariega with us, the Chancellor of our Florida College System, the Great 28, <laughs> isn't that great right? 28, yep. And so um, it's, it's an honor. Today is a big day for our college, and the Chancellor came in to, to share this great day with me as relatively new president, now going into my second year, the second 365, we call it. Uh, and so in my year, one thing I've discovered is that Madeline is certainly the chief advocate and marketer for our 28 institutions in the Florida college system. Nobody has ever that I've worked with has ever done it better than you, Madeline. I'm, I'm honored that you're sitting on the stage uh, with us today for this program. So I know that you are passionate about the work and one of the reasons is because you're a graduate of this system. So I, I want you to share a little bit with us what drives you and uh, give us a little background about your work and, and what really makes you such a passionate individual about this system. Thank you, and I'm honored to be here, um, and especially just so much um, you've done in this past year for the Thank college you. and for the state, and so, um, so much respect and admiration for your work as Thank well. You. you know, I'm passionate about it because I believe in it, because I live it. Um, I would not be where I'm sitting today if it were not for a college. It's where I started as a student athlete. It's where I really um, got my academic legs if you will, as a college student. And I identify with the students at our colleges that sometimes have a sense that maybe college isn't for them, that they're not sure where they belong. And so that's who I wake up for and fight for every day. It's for that student who is just coming to our colleges to make a better future for themselves and their family. And the faculty that work so closely with them and in inspiring them and motivating them. And then I see how we transform lives. And it's a privilege to be, uh, lead a system whose business is to transform lives every day and, and make families better as a result of education. I think it's important to note too in this program that the state college system, the community colleges, it's the only American invention in education created in the early 1900s out of the University of Chicago at, at Joliet. And it was created because of access. And so there would be a community connectivity <clears throat> between the uh, institution and the individuals that were really in, in many cases, as it is today, geographically bound. Yep. They can't drive uh, two hours nor do they have the resources to move into student housing necessarily uh, and manage multiple priorities uh, like many of our students do. Uh, plus, as you know, 70% of our students are part-time adult learners. So it's a, a significant uh, service that we play and a significant role that we play. In fact, talk just a little bit about the size of the system versus other sectors of higher ed in Florida. So 28 colleges, um, 800,000 students, we're economic engines for our local communities. We not only provide the workforce training, but think about all of the other um, things that our colleges provide right here in the theater where we are, the kind yeah. of cultural programming that you're providing to the community. But we're also social mobility engines. Great. It's where students come um, to receive that education, balance life and work. Um, I often say our students aren't full-time students because they're not prioritizing education. They are part-time students because they're prioritizing family. Yeah. 
and they want to balance providing for their family and continuing their education. So with that, um, we are 28 colleges strong. Florida really is a national model when you think about our community college work, the kind of work that we're doing at a systems level. Um, the foresight and insight to make sure, as you mentioned, um, every Floridian has a community college within 50 miles of where they live so that they don't have to be on the road two hours, that our colleges, regardless of the name, are the community's college, that we have local board of trustees as leaders that give back into our colleges and help you set that vision for the local community. Uh, the business partnerships with our advisory boards and all of our academic programs. So if you think about the 28 colleges, the 800,000 students, the thousands of faculty and staff that we have, and then all of our business champions and leaders, um, we are in every community and probably in every mile of the state uh, making an impact. You know, when I speak out to various civic groups, community groups, one of the first questions I always ask is, how many of you have been impacted by Northwest Florida State College? Have you attended? You've had a family member attend? You've taken certification courses? Inevitably, uh, the overwhelming majority of people in the room, above 80%, have been impacted by this institution. I just attended a chamber event I'm on the local board, and as we were going around the room, the chair said, you know, we're glad to have Dr. Stevenson on the board, and the driving force behind this community is Northwest Florida State College. And, of course, I'd have to brag a little bit if I didn't say that we're the number one basketball team in the nation right now. Well, ladies, that's close to my heart. <laughs> yeah, ladies number three, uh, and our baseball team started out preseason number 11. So uh, things are going well here, and we are making an impact, and I think that's what state colleges do better than anybody. I think there are three factors. We, we impact community development, economic development, and workforce development, and I don't think anybody does it better than we do. Uh, of course, we're very supportive of the work that our governor is doing in job creation in the state of Florida. He has introduced a new initiative called Rise 55 uh, by 2025. And I know that's very important to us because we are trying to increase educational attainment. Talk a little bit about that and about how our system is working to help the governor achieve that goal. So the governor has been steadfast in his um, vision for Florida, and that is to create jobs. Um, he fundamentally believes that if we can get every Floridian a job, um, they are gonna provide for their families, they're gonna give back to their communities, and Florida is a place that's gonna continue to thrive. So with that end, we're doing everything we can to position Florida to attract major companies to come here and set up headquarters to make sure that our businesses in Florida Florida have opportunities to grow right here in Florida and for our businesses to thrive. And the only way you can do that is giving them a talented workforce. You have to be able to give them the consumer confidence that if I grow my business, I have the 10 people I need to hire. And so Rise to 55 is a focus on keep looking at attainment levels in Florida. And what I mean by attainment is just the number of 25 to 64 year olds in a community that have either a certificate program, an a certificate, an associates, or a baccalaureate. And so we know that the path to career is multiple paths. So certificates are important to us and making sure that those are those quick turnaround training programs that business leaders tell us time and time again they need. Um, that those have a pathway into our associates programs and that our associate degree students are either going to the universities or going right into work like in nursing. And then the number of individuals that continue on with their baccalaureate. And so we know that about 63% of the jobs that we're creating require one of those credentials. About 47% of Floridians have one. There's the gap. Yep. And so if we want to continue to build Florida um, to make sure that we have a strong economy, we have to build the workforce by 2025 and into 2030. The Florida Chamber just put out the Jobs 2030 report, and they give us a blueprint that 
clearly says we need to get to 60% by 2030. Right. So we're working within all our communities and putting together advisory groups and local college access networks to think about it from a business perspective and education perspective. How do we increase the number of students that choose to go to college? How do we make sure that they finish and finish on time? And then how do we re-engage the adults that have some college and need to come back and finish? And so that's the campaign and that's what we're doing and working with our colleges, our universities, and our business leaders across the state. So you'd say times are changing. Isn't that right? Yeah. Times are changing. And one of the things that, that I've really pushed on here as the president is to get our people to build into their habit it's almost like modification behavior to think for a change. You can't think like we used to think. You can't think today like you're going to think tomorrow. You have to constantly assess, environmentally scan, use your internal mechanism to look out and see where do we need to go. And that brings me to my next question, and that is we know the job market is changing. Life is changing. The world's changing. Global impact is, is making some significant Im impacts on, on all of us locally. Um, and so I, what I say to the college here is that we're just a microcosm of this big world and we better grab and, and seize the moment. Uh, so what I, I'd like for you to talk about a little bit is about this job market because now it's not so much about going to a four-year institution and getting a general ed degree. In fact, I'm not sure you can get a job with a general education degree, just a general degree from a four-year institution. There has to be more specificity. And so I know our institution and this system is really paying attention to that. I'd like for you to talk a little bit about what we're doing in meeting the needs of this changing environment in job creation. It's a great question. The hallmark of our system is to be nimble and responsive to community needs. Our communities are larger when you look at workforce because it's global needs. And I think that's, that's the pivot. The pivot is that there was this moment that you could earn a degree and that was the career for life. Actually, if you think back not so many years ago, you could finish high school, mm -hmm. get into an entry level job at a company, Absolutely. stay for 30 years and move into the middle class that way. That's not the case today. Right. We know that a student who finishes high school doesn't enroll in college. A year later, if they're working, they're working making about $8 an hour. So we're creating a cycle there of generational poverty, and yep. we don't yep. want to do that. Yep. What we want students to have is a track that leads them into a job. Um, again, some of it can be short term certificate program that has the real hands on life skills that employers need. Um, the associate programs, you look at our associates and science programs, what is really important there, and we hear it, and I know you hear it, because each one of our associates and science programs, those two year technical programs, have advisory boards made up of experts in the industry. And so they're telling us, you gotta shift your curriculum, you have to do this. And then the third piece is, we are now training students for jobs that don't exist. So we have to build that foundational knowledge because we are creating jobs every day that just don't exist. And some are going out when you look at technology and automation, um, but the good news is we're also creating lots of advanced jobs. Look at advanced manufacturing area that just dipped off and then Florida is just a state leading the country around advanced exactly. manufacturing. So one of the things we're doing at the, at the system level is working with other um, state agencies. We work really closely with Career Source and their board and making sure that our colleges are aligning to what's happening in Career Source and their marketplace and the um, way that they're responding and making sure that we leverage those dollars that come in for workforce training programs. We work closely with the Department of Economic Opportunity, DEO, and um, their team. They drive the data. They're the ones who are telling us real time, here's where we're gaining jobs. Jobs. Here's the type of jobs we're gaining um, with business leaders that are coming in and talking to them. Um, we have a great partnership with Enterprise Florida that's working on attracting businesses. And I know many of our colleges have applied for the job growth grants to, 
be responsive to communities. Sure. And that's at the system level, how we help our colleges. We're, we're talking to business leaders, statewide agencies, and making sure that we are getting to our colleges the information they need to be responsive locally. Um, because that's their work. And um, together we complement each other. And I think we're, we're creating great partnerships across the state. And, and I agree. Uh, for years before I came here, I admired the Florida college system and, and actually had a desire to be a part of it. It just had to be the right time uh, for, for me and for the right institution. You know, these are all about authentic fits and making yeah. sure you're, you're at the right place at the right time for the right reason. Uh, and, and it happened to me and, and I can tell you in the year that I've been here in working with you and with your staff, as well as the Council of Presidents, there is a unique organic kind of um, blending mm -hmm. that sort of softens somewhat each individual mission into where we focus a lot on that corporate mission of this system. And I think those monthly meetings with, with my colleagues has helped me listening to, to your perspective on where this system is, is vitally, vitally important. One of the hallmarks of this institution, and we just rolled out a new strategic plan, a three-year plan, and the very first goal is to be the first choice in higher ed that is affordable and accessible. And I know that's a strong component for this system in all of our colleges. I'd like for you to talk just a little bit about how that accessibility and affordability impact our work with workforce development. So I think it's critical, and they go hand in hand. Um, you're right about the... Um, the meetings that we have all of the time sharing best practices and learning from one another I think that's critical so that way we can leverage that knowledge gained and be able to make an impact at a much quicker fast pace if someone's already done right. it how do you go ahead and replicate a very successful uh, program in another part of that's the state it. so I think that's important but let's talk about affordability um, it's been the governor's priority since day one and, and steadfast in making sure that we keep college affordable and for the most part, when you think about families and colleges and, and you think about a college education, immediately debt. You know, you're talking yeah. about all of the national debt and that's true, but that isn't the case for our students. The reality is that we've kept our colleges affordable. Less than 25% of any of our students take on debt while they finish. And we haven't um, raised tuition in like here, we five have, years. We have not raised tuition. <laughs> um, we've, you know, continued to invest in, in our system and advocate for continuing continued investments. And that's the first part, right? We hear from students, college has to be affordable. Yep. And that follows, it needs to be accessible. That means it needs to be close to home. I can get to it um, quickly and I can still balance life. And I believe that Access and affordability has been a priority for us, and we've been recognized. We, uh, Florida was just named uh, by U.S. News and Weekly uh, number one state in higher education. That means the entire higher education ecosystem because of the work of our universities, but so much of that was about our two plus two, our associate in arts completion rates, and most importantly, affordability. Um, so they go um, hand in hand. You can't tout access and not be affordable and you have to have affordability with access. And the next piece of that is then a success driven agenda. How do we make it affordable and accessible for you? And then how do we make sure you finish what you started when you get here? That, that's so important. I, I think uh, for me as president, uh, when I get up every morning, I ask God to help me be a better president today than I was yesterday. It's this, I, I remember very early in my career when SACS COC rolled out this whole idea of institutional effectiveness. And I'm going to tell you, it scared a lot of people off because they thought, man, we're going to have to start measuring ourselves. We're going to have to start being accountable. But ultimately, it was the absolute best thing we could do to maintain quality. Uh, and so we've challenged our institution and our people to look at what they do and try to be good, great, the best in everything that we do and look for those gaps and let's try to fix them. So we've wired up our new strategic plan to do that very thing. We've placed key performance indicators down. They cascade into that 
plan. And, and now everyone is held accountable to move the needle forward. You, I'm sure, are aware of this. We were selected as a 150 Aspen Award winner and received word this week that we've moved into the next round, which is absolutely wonderful for us. Uh, my goal is to win the Aspen Prize, at, at least the first step to get to the top 10. And we are moving the needle here. I'm really excited about that. Uh, but what we have to do is look at every sector of our institution, continuing education, adult education, academics, the general ed component, the career ed, the health science, uh, and, and we never can lose sight of the fact that we're sending a majority of our students to universities for four-year degrees. So I'd like for you to talk a little bit about the system success, maybe give us some measures or some numbers. I know our students transfer and the majority of them have higher grade point averages uh, when they get through than the students that started FSU or the University of Florida as native students there. Could you talk a little bit about that? Um, absolutely. I think the, hall, I'm, I, the hallmark of our system is the two plus two. You know you came from other states. Everyone wants to model Florida's two plus two. And it's important to go back in history. Why is it so strong? Um, initially, universities, um, when they were launched, were doing the third and fourth year and our colleges, which were launched as junior colleges, were doing one and two. Um, Florida's population was small. Um, Florida's in a unique place across the country. A thousand people come to Florida a day to make it home. That isn't, a, wow. that isn't the case across the country. No, so as Florida grows and as Florida grew, so then did our universities started offering full four year programs and then our colleges. Back in 2001, the legislature wanted to make sure that Florida had enough law schools and medical schools and those professional schools and they increased those among our universities and at that time said to the colleges, hey, we're gonna need you to do some workforce baccalaureates because they knew that access was important, that we would um, be growing more jobs, needing more credentials, and how could we have um, and make sure that we had access at all of those points. What's never been lost, and when you think about systems that have evolved in that way from our universities and their graduate, you know, this year having one of our universities in the top 10 right. nationally recognized world-class universities, critical to Florida. So you think about them driving that kind of success. Our college is being asked to advance some of the workforce baccalaureates so that they're responsive to the community. What may have been lost would have been two plus two, and that sits at the core of who we are. Last year, our system graduated 116,000 students. 50% of those students were Associates of Arts students. In your graduation, that was 60%. Right. You said it right. The majority of your students here are saying they're gonna finish their AA and go on to the universities. Absolutely. A great statistic is 54% of the juniors and seniors enrolled at our universities are one of our students. So they're coming into our universities, they're contributing academically, they're ready socially and emotionally for what that university experience is like, and they're helping those universities arrive to those world-class status to be able to make sure that they're recognized as um, the country's best universities in Florida. And so that speaks to the quality of our faculty, the kind of academic support that we're providing our students, that when they arrive onto one of the university campuses, um, they are doing just as well or better than a student who competed to get into that university. And um, I think we're steadfast committed uh, to that with our university partners. I know that you are with are. UWF and, and FSU. We are. And I know you may be watching today and you're wondering, how can I enroll at Northwest Florida State College? And on the screen right now is our telephone number. And there is a navigator waiting to talk to you today about our programs and how you can get engaged very quickly. Our financial aid uh, counselors are available. And so please, uh, if you're interested, call our number. We have six sites right here in Northwest Florida and we deliver the best quality education possible. Thank you for joining us for this extraordinary episode of Northwest Florida State College Outlook. It was an honor to interview Chancellor Pumariega and we wanna thank her again for taking time to visit our campus right here in Niceville, Florida. And as always, we thank you for watching our show and for your support of Northwest Florida 
State College. Thank you for watching Northwest Florida State College Outlook. Our mission is our students, helping each person who comes through our doors to achieve their individual goals for educational and career attainment. Improve your life today at Northwest Florida State College.